On this last day of Women's History Month, a young woman in our area is making history. Delaware County now has its first female Eagle Scout. Angelina is one of the first female scouts in the country and the first female scout in the cradle of liberty to earn the rank of Eagle Scout. I'm the first female Eagle Scout, the Cradle Liberty Council, so it's like the tri-state area, um, which I wasn't trying to do. I wasn't like, that wasn't my goal, like when girls were allowed in. Like being first wasn't what was motivating me to do everything. It was because like I wanted to do it. It was just a bonus. I think when I first started going on like scout trips and stuff was when I was five or six maybe with my, my brother George signed up and my dad would go. And I would not do Girl Scouts because they weren't outside that much. So my dad didn't have a choice but to bring me with them. I love to like outdo them and everything, especially my older brother, George. Um, we're like a year and a half apart, so really competitive. But whenever they'd be like, why are you here? I'm like, oh, I'll show you why I'm here. I just like felt like I knew so much more and I always wanted to like one up everybody and my dad was like really encouraging like just because the boys were doing it didn't mean that I couldn't do it either. We will remove the neckerchief and replace it with the neckerchief representing the rank of Eagle Scout. I was at my Eagle Scout ceremony and the most important person wasn't there. I got it in November and then December is when he got sick so I didn't get a chance to plan my like Eagle Scout ceremony so like he passed right before that. Eagle Scout Angelina Sims, in recognition of the wisdom and guidance given to you by your father, Salvatore Ficarra. But we did like a little tribute thing where we honored him there. My brother George walked up with his shirt and we like, I still got the pin his shirt, so that was really cool. Will you present George this Eagle's father's pin to place on Sam's uniform? We know he is smiling on you today. I, it was hard, I think, like sitting up there. Because when people talk, they talk about like all the memories like my dad was always there for stuff. So like sitting through that and like, and like, wow, he's not gonna see me get eagle. Yeah, I don't, it's just, it's a really weird experience. I think of that a lot when I go to scouting trips or anything where he's not a part of it. Like, like I just imagine like the role that he would have if he was here. Oh my God, this, <laughs> this is really funny. We were whitewater rafting and my dad, that camera that he has, he made it the whole trip with the camera not getting wet. <laughs> the second we went to go get out of the raft, he dropped it in the water and it was fried. <laughs> yeah. This was when I was really scared to move, so my dad was coming up with me to take a picture of us at the top of the mountain. Yeah, someone carried me and put me down for the big group photo. And then my dad had to come back up and get me, yeah. That's at Resica, um, my dad, Steve and Joe, always together, probably doing something. They were probably planning something there. They like to mess with us a lot at camp. And my dad put um, fake bugs in all of our sleeping bags one night. And just as we slowly went in, we all started screaming at different points. My dad loved scouts, like he loved our troop. Anything, we, anytime we can go scouting, go to the wilderness, anything, he was there. In November, I was scheduled for my board of review. I like was in my room doing it, and my dad was out in the hallway trying to listen in. And I was like, you can't be in the room with me. So like as I did everything, I knew he was out there. I could hear the floor creaking from him. And then uh, as soon as they announced, they were like, congrats, you got to go. He started screaming in the hallway. The 
the day after Christmas, he actually, he went for a walk and then he had came back and then he went to sit down. He was having like, he was holding his side and couldn't sit. So then we made the call for him to go to the hospital. Um, and um, I think the last day I talked to him was December 28th. Um, I was joking with him. I told him I figured out how to work the vacuum. Um, just stuff like that. Like he, we were always playing around. And then he had a stroke and was in a coma. And we eventually had to make the decision to let him go. Um, definitely the hardest decision I've ever had to make. He actually left us all a letter that he had wrote and we each had like our own little part in it. And mine's told me to be nice to my brother George and that he was really proud of me and to keep striving for greatness. Whatever my goal is in life or like whatever my next step is, to try to do that to the best that I can, at the best of my ability, I think that's what he meant there. I just want to help kids realize who they are and that they're not alone. Even sometimes it might feel like that, but there's people out there who will care for you and who love you. You just have to find the right people.